Hi everyone, I hope this finds you safe and well. I'm sure that you all agree the last few months have been a bit strange and somewhat challenging for us all. So thank you very much today for taking the time to join us on this webinar. Okay, let's get started. I'm Elaine Clayton and I'm very happy to be joined today by Phil and Helen from our technical team here at the Coal Authority. Today we are going to be talking to you about coal mining risk assessments. So please feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar via the questions function and we'll look to respond to these after the webinar in the form of a handy FAQ document. So I'm going to hand over to Helen and Phil shortly and they're going to talk you through everything that you need to know about our coal mining risk assessment. Today's agenda will be some background to planning and development on the coal field. We'll then move on to discuss what is a coal mining risk assessment, when you might need one, what risks are considered within the report, and then recommendations and next steps. And we'll finish off by letting you know how we can support you. So I'll hand you over now to Phil and Helen for introductions and to walk you through the coal mining risk assessment. My name's Phil Broughton. I studied mining engineering at Leeds University. I've been with the Coal Authority for 17 years and I've worked across a range of departments here. I started out in mining records and then went on to work in the public safety, mining inspections, environment and innovation teams. Um, my name's Helen Bennett. I'm a geologist and I've been at the Coal Authority since 2014. And before that, I had worked at the environmental and power sectors in the UK and in Australia. So Phil and I both work within the Coal Authority's commercial reports and advisory services team in the technical function. And we provide a range of services and advice to consultants, contractors and developers on the coal field. And today we will be providing you with an overview to our coal mining risk assessments, including what they are, when you might need them, and how we can support you further with development on the coal field. So just to provide some background, the coal field forms around 11% of the Great Britain by land area. Nine million properties and nine of our 10 largest urban centres sit on or adjacent to the coal field. So for developers up and down the UK, the challenges of building in former coal mining areas are a problem which may come across your desk at some time. Around 9,000 consultation requests are made to the Coal Authority's planners each year, which we will discuss in a moment. And it's also worth considering that although coal mine operations in the UK are a fraction of what they once were, there are still around 1,000 substance claims and service hazards reported on existing properties and land last year. So it is still as important as ever that mining risks are considered for developments going forwards. So ground stability is a consideration of planning policy at local and national level. And local planning authorities, building control and the coal authorities planning teams as statutory consultee all have regulatory roles to ensure that ground stability with respect to mining risk is considered. However, ultimately developers are responsible to ensure that their proposals are carried out in a safe and stable manner. And where historical coal mining requires consideration, this is where the coal mining risk is causing. Now, while some coal field areas are underlain by workings that are of significant depth or where coal has not been worked, Approximately 15% of the coal field makes up what is referred to as a development high risk area. The development high risk area is defined by features which could pose a risk to development works, mainly with regards to ground instability. In these areas, local planning authorities, as well as the developer and the coal authorities planners, need to be satisfied that any risk of instability to a development has been addressed. Many LPAs will not validate the planning application for a development which requires one in the development high risk area until coal mining risk assessment has been produced. So a coal mining risk assessment or CMRA is a desk based review of the risk that coal mining legacy may pose to a particular development site 
and it's produced by geotechnical and engineering specialists. As we mentioned earlier, the development high risk area where CMRAs are required makes up 15% of the exposed coal field. And we're going to briefly run through those features which make up the high risk area. So we will consider areas of known recorded mine workings, specifically any areas where coal or an associated min mineral like ironstone or fire clay has been mined by underground methods and where the extracted horizon may have insufficient competent rock cover to prevent the migration of voids and broken ground to surface. We will also consider areas where mining may have occurred close to surface, but where no records for that potential mining exist. So prior to 1872, there was no requirement by law for mine operators to deposit copies of working and abandonment plans with the Secretary of State. These were the plans that captured the area and the extent of the workings. We also have to consider that many older abandonment plans would have been produced using historical surveying methods. Therefore, a degree of inaccuracy must be considered with older plans. We must therefore consider that wherever coal is recorded to be present at shallow depth is of a workable thickness and has the potential to have been worked, that it may have been worked. So coal can be extracted from the surface by open cast mining, as well as by underground methods. Often, when surface mines finished operating, consideration was not given to the means by which the holes in the ground were backfilled and the ground reinstated. Many were reinstated with a view to using the ground for agricultural purposes, where the gradual settlement of the backfill over time would not necessarily be deemed as catastrophic. However, where structures are proposed to be built over open cast backfill, settlement can occur. Of even more concern, where development will straddle the edge of the hole in the ground, what we call a high wall, differential settlement can occur, causing significant structural damage and therefore consideration must be given to this within a development layout. So the risks we've just discussed generally deal with those types of mine workings close to the surface, but what about deeper mine workings? Well, in the more recent past, engineering advancements have allowed for coal and other minerals to be worked from several hundred metres below ground level, and usually through a type of working called long wall mining. Long wall mining generally only causes ground deformation in the first few years after mining has ceased in the formation of fissures, which are long cracks or fractures running along the ground and caused by extension and tension within the ground. However, once these fissures form, they can, they can cause ground stability problems for many years into the future, even when remediated. Therefore, where a fissure exists, it should be avoided as part of any development layout. Naturally occurring geological faults also need to be considered, as these, along with fissures, can act as a migratory pathway, for example, for water and gas. There are approximately 173,500 known coal mine entries in the UK. These come under the category of shafts, which are vertical entries into the mine, which would usually be brick or more recently concrete lined, and may extend up to several hundred metres. Adits, which are inclined entries or roadways into the mine, and bell pits, which are a rudimentary type of shaft and must often sunk without any lining to the shallowest seam, with extraction only extending a few metres before the roof would collapse into the pit. This was a particularly dangerous way of working a seam. Like Avoncast High Walls, mine entries can cause layout restrictions for developments. When mine entries were abandoned, often very little was done to the backfill or seal off the mine entrance, certainly to a standard that would have ensured the safety of the mine entry for years to come. So in the case of shafts, we can end up with void columns which can be several metres across and extend to tens or hundreds of metres into the ground. Even where the mine entry has been remediated, the structure of the mine entry will often be remain and therefore development should be avoided above or in proximity of a mine entry where possible. We also consider historical mine gas occurrences, mine water and former surface hazards as a means of further quantifying the potential risk of mining risk features, which could impact upon a proposed development. All coal seams and workings have the potential to contain gas, 
which may need to be considered during ground investigation and remediation. It may be necessary to install gas mitigation measures, such as gas membranes, into new developments. As you can see from the photo, water has the potential to flow through mine workings and out of mine entries. And again, this may need consideration prior to and during development, as alternative means for treating mine entries may be required. In terms of how we understand and interpret this risk, there are a range of source materials that we would use. So our starting point is a Coal Authority's consultant report, which provides a detailed summary of features, including work seams and their bed, the best plot position of recorded mine entries, and the location of any surface hazard or mine gas emission points. We then use geological records, including plans and borehole information, ranging from previous site investigations to coal perspective records, as well as abandonment plans and records from the Coal Authority's extensive archives. Our engineers and geologists interpret this information based on their wealth of experience in understanding coal mining risk and make an informed review of the mining legacy features. So we're just going to show you a brief example of a typical site that may come forwards for development and how we would go about understanding the risk on that site. So if we take the site within the red line boundary, it looks fairly benign on the surface of it. Uh, looking at a map, you wouldn't necessarily have much idea of what, if any, ground risks from mining might be going on under the surface. But if we start to have a look at some of the features going on under the surface using a combination of data sources, we can first see that two coal seam outcrops are reported to exist within the site boundary. So in order to understand what these coal seams are, how thick they are, are they likely to have been worked in the area, we need to go back to the source information that these outcrops have been taken from. So if we overlay here a geological map for the area, you can see that the roots of the outcrops are marked on. The geological maps often yield further information, such as seam thickness and areas where seam exposures have been encountered which can start to build up a picture of ground conditions in the area. We can also see that a couple of faults are recorded within the site boundary, which may act as a conduit for things such as groundwater and gas. We start to get more of an indication as to any disturbance in the ground when we see that former open cast workings are reported within the site, so areas where coal has been extracted by digging out from the surface, and the approximate extent of this is shown here. Again, we will look at the source plan for this extraction area where we start to see the extent of extraction. So this plan here shows the extraction at the northern extent of the site. It appears that there are further areas of extraction in the south, not because of this particular plan, which should also need consideration. And we can see lots of detailed information here, such as depth of seams, and also even the extent of some seams of old underground workings. So this will suggest to us that the potential exists for further unrecorded shallow mine workings in the area associated with these seams. Unfortunately, the high wall boundary, so the edge of the hole in the ground, is not marked in this plan. We will need to consider the potential for open cast backfill to settle and changing ground conditions from one side of the high wall to the other. We can also see that the Coal Authority records a number of mine entries in the area. Now, when we consider mine entries, uh, whilst we will obtain the current best plot positions for these, we will also go back and review the source plans for these entries. So the positions of these entries may have been reviewed with historical methods. However, with modern georeferencing techniques, we can go back and review what we consider to be the current best plot position. So for example, on this plan, we can, we can suggest that all the mine shafts plotted may actually exist a couple of metres further west from the current best plot positions. There may of course be multiple source plans for one entry, and so we would consider which we deem to be the most reliable source when judging the best plot position. Changes to a mine entry position may not have an impact on this particular site, but the advantage is that where the mine entries do exist on or within influencing distance of the site, where a mine entry best plot position can be improved, we can refer to this in our we can refer this to our mining information team to ensure that whenever this site is looked at in the future, 
the information for the site is as up to date as possible and you can ensure that any decisions made on any potential layouts take this into consideration. So once we, we've reviewed the available information and all of the potential risks have been considered, what happens next? Well, the CMRA needs to explain to the LPA, as well as the interested parties, whether a site can be taken forward for development, and if so, what further actions may be required. In the event that there is not likely to be any structural risk posed to the development for mining and legacy, then we can categorise the site as being low risk with respect to mining. We still may recommend, however, that a gas risk assessment is undertaken on the site to establish whether any intact coal seams or other features in the area warrant further retention prior to development commencing. However, this is something that will be regulated by the local authority as this will likely take into consideration all forms of ground gas, not just that from coal. We would categorise the site as medium risk in the event that there are features such as underground shallow mine workings that require consideration but do not pose a layout risk. Then we can recommend further actions such as ground investigation, which can be conditioned by the LPA. This in effect allows the development to continue to progress through planning However, the investigations and any remedial works recommended would need to be undertaken before the condition can be discharged and the development can, commen can commence. However, if features such as open gas high walls, mine fissures exist within the site, they would consider the development to be a, at high risk from mining legacy features, such that the nature and the layers of the development cannot be confirmed until further works such as ground investigations have been carried out to confirm the position and nature of or condition of that feature. Ultimately, the CMRA will make recommendations around what, if any, further actions are required. This may result in conditions being applied to the application or in the final layout design being subject to the outcomes of the intrusive ground investigations. So on the site we looked at earlier, the potential for unrecorded workings on the site would require ground investigation before, but they wouldn't pose any restrictions in terms of layout. However, the potential for settlement of open cast backfill, and specifically the potential for the open cast high wall to exist within the site, will require consideration for the development layout. We will consider this site to be a high risk site where further ground investigation is required before the layout of development can be confirmed as there will be certain areas or features, specifically the high wall, which need to be avoided. So just before we finish, uh, we're just going to quickly run through the consultation journey when it comes to sites that fall within the high risk area to show you how a coal mining risk assessment fits into that process. So it's a good idea to obtain a coal mining risk assessment from us at early doors. Some local planning authorities won't validate the planning application until a CMRA has been produced. We can produce a CMRA for you later on down the line, but the earlier you have an understanding of what you are dealing with in terms of mining risks, the better. So once we have produced a CMRA for you, this would then need to be submitted by yourself or your clients, along with any other documents needing consultation to your local planning authority. The LPA will then contact the Coal Authority's planning team for comment. They will review the CMRA and any other documentation and provide feedback to the LPA. For example, this may be recommendations for the conditions. The LPA will then feed this back to yourselves. So branching off from this, if at any time you want to discuss your proposals further, for example, if you want to check in advance what the Coal Authority's planning consultation response might entail, or check if you were on the right lines with a ground investigation proposal, you can tap into the expertise of our engineers, planners and permitting managers in the form of our pre-application planning and technical advice service. And also in the event that we make recommendations in the CMRA for further ground investigations or remediation, then you would need to obtain a permit from the Coal Authority's permitting team. Ultimately, this is a continuous loop until you're in the right place to discharge your conditions and take your site forwards. So at every step of the way, we are able to support you with any questions that arise with regards to mining legacy.
So just to recap, for your development sites, the fall-in areas where coal mining risk assessment features, sorry, coal mining features may be present, early consideration is required. Our coal mining risk assessments will consider this risk and we will provide you with the necessary advice to take your development forward safely. Thank you both very much for that. <clears throat> that was really interesting. I hope that everybody listening found that interesting too. If you have any questions or you would like to find out more, you can visit our website on the link below or you can give us a call or email us. All of our contact details are on the screen now. <laughs>